would you please stand and join us in honoring America with the national anthem. Once again, welcome to Beck Stadium for tonight's game between the St. Andrews Highlanders and the Regent Knights. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are live at St. Andrews Episcopal here in Austin, Texas. I am Jack Farrell, joined by my producer, Mr. Blaze Woodward, and we are here for some Highlander football on a Thursday evening. Got a 6.30 kickoff for you here coming up in just a couple of minutes. Should be a good one between the Southwest Parkway rivalry. Yeah, it's a good day for some football out here. I want to say that the Regents, they look like they're determined to get a win out here. At the same time, St. Andrews, they got some big players. They're feeding those boys well. Who knows what could go down today? 93 degrees is the temperature for the opening kickoff. Regents won the toss. They deferred, for to, uh, deferred to kick off in the first half, so they will receive in the second. They want to get their defense out on the field first as the Highlanders take the field back from a couple seasons playing with St. Stephen's as the Austin Saints. Now Highlanders are their own football program once again playing some JV squads this season as they get their program off the ground and tonight they've got the Regents Knights. Good thing for this team to build into their own you know culture. They'll, they'll need to get some wins here, get a winning culture going and then we'll see how they develop from there. Absolutely. As on to kick to get things started for Regents is number three, Weston Mebbin. He's a sophomore kicker and punter, so he'll be handling some special teams duties for the Knights today. He'll line up with the kicking team. Let's see how, how good the boot on this kid is. Dial and Goodlett back to return for the Highlanders. Getting started a little bit early here at 628 as here is the kick. He'll send it deep. Luke Dial goes low to recover that one. And he's got a little bit of lane on the right side, and he'll be pushed out of bounds just across the 25-yard line, and that's where the Highlanders will set up to start this football game. Looks like we can already tell from the St. Andrews team that they're going to be playing physical today. They've done some drills, and it looks like they're going to use strength and conditioning to win this game. The Highlander cheer squad getting the crowd pumped up to start this thing. Quarterback Matt, uh, Mark Greenberg is in the pistol to start things off. Looks and he's got his man. It's off of the hands of Aiden Key. So on first down, the Highlanders with an incomplete pass. First play on offense for the Highlanders was a dropped pass. We'll see what they can do to overcome that. 9.51 remaining here in the first quarter. Here's the snap. Broken play here right away as Greenberg's going to try and have to do something himself, and he's thrown out of bounds. 
And he'll lose a couple on that play. As a running back went the wrong direction, it appeared. Not a lot of room there to make something happen. It looks like the defense was all over him. The D-line, most of them got past the line, and all he could do was run away. We'll see what they can dial up here on a third and long ball back at the 25-yard line. They need the 39. As here's Greenberg. Man in motion. Here's a snap looking left. He'll take the shot. He's got a man and overthrowing number nine, Luke Precourt. So on the first drive, St. Andrews comes up empty. They'll have to punt it away. Well, they got a sense early of what they can do and what they can work with. Looks like they're going to need to make some adjustments on their next time out on offense. We'll see what they have in store. And we know what this region squad looks like. The varsity level all the way down through JV. This is a dangerous program. Heck, if you want to go all the way down to the middle school level, you can do that too. As on to kick for the Highlanders. It's a short punt. But a friendly bounce up near midfield. It'll still be in Highlander territory for Rico Borline. We'll see Regents come out for their first offensive series. Islanders a deep roster. Excuse me, uh, Regents with a deep roster there. JV, as many guys on the sideline as some varsity teams as we have Hudson Powell. That's a tall QB being able to see over the line. Got three receivers up to the top. Motion man is Charlie Griffin. As here's the snap, Powell looking right. Throws and he's got his man underneath. Breaking one tackle is Brady Robert. A modest gain there on first down inside the 45 yard line. Good play for them to showcase what they've been doing this off season. Looks like they've got a lot of plays in the bag and they're gonna use them all today here. Powell looking right, he's got a man, he finds him. And he'll have enough for the first down if they give him forward progress and it looks like they will. Liam Murphy on the reception. Chains move. Some substitutions on the night side of the football. Motion man out. And the swing pass there is incomplete. Brings up second down, Griffin, the intended target. As they've used him a little bit in some pre-snap motion already a few times here on this first drive. That'll bring up second and ten, ball in the 46. Nine minutes, 12 seconds remaining here in the first, or excuse me, eight minutes, 12 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. As all day on the rollout, and he's got his man. That's Robert downfield. First down yardage and knocking on the door of the red zone are the Regents Knights. Knights already showcasing their passing game. And it's been a good one from Powell so far. All of his throws right on the money. Three receivers to the right. Murphy lined up wide. As they'll go with the screen pass to Self. Self with a little bit of space. He bursts free. Jukes back, makes a man miss, and he can't get free for the touchdown. But inside the 10 and enough for a first down. Right there, he showed some good moves in the open field. Made himself hard to tackle. Good play. Absolutely showing off some of that craftiness. No play clock here at the JV level. Clock continues to move down under eight minutes left here in the first. Here's Powell, takes a snap, and that one was eaten up from the beginning. Wasn't sure if it was a handoff or a read option where the quarterback could have tucked, but either way, they were both hit in the backfield, and that's a tackle for loss on first down for St. Andrews. Now that Regents is down in scoring position, we'll see if this St. Andrews defense can employ a bend-don't-break strategy. Quarterback directing traffic at the line. 
Here's the snap. He's looking left. Not much time. He'll throw off his back foot, and that one is incomplete. Anthony Tassone was there on the coverage. And that'll bring up third down, and it's a third and goal. Right now, we'll see if that St. Andrews defense can come up with a stop early in the game to give them some momentum going into the next drive. And that would be an absolute huge stop getting down here into the red zone. Forcing just a field goal, hopefully. As here's Powell looking right. He's got a man, and he threw it behind him just off the hands of Brady Robert. And that will be fourth down. We'll see what they do here. It's a long 12. So I assume they send out the kicking team, and it looks like they will do just that. Good play, good play call from the St. Andrews coach. They just couldn't complete it there. We'll see if they can execute better next time, given the chance. And they, he did have a man, just couldn't quite put it on the money. And we'd, we've seen Hudson Powell make some good throws already today. So a bit of a break for the Highlanders. 6.42 left here in the first. As that'll bring on Weston Mebbin for the kick try. And this one is up, it has the distance, and that one is good. So Regent strikes first. Three points on the board for the Regents Knights, and with that, we're going to go ahead and take our first break of the ball game. Thank you for listening to Highlander Football on Vibe Live. We'll be right back. Vibe Live, formerly K-Man Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Touchdown, Rangers. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Bravo to Cameron Bravo. 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 Back in from the timeout. Regents striking first. They had a short field to work with. They were able to march down before Highlanders got that stop, forced the field goal, and now St. Andrews with their second crack at it on the offensive end. Hopefully we'll see some more execution on the offensive side of the ball. Last time they had some plays that just didn't quite work for them. Maybe they can make some adjustments and get it running down the field again. And in a young season with a young program, you're bound to see some mistakes, especially with the COVID season not getting as much of a training camp as is normal. As Here's a short kick. It will be juggled and taken at the 20-yard line, and not much more than that running on the wrong axis there on the return. But no turnover, able to corral the muffed kick. And the Highlanders have an 80-yard field to get on the board here in the first quarter. Back in the huddle. And I believe this lack of a play clock will definitely benefit St. Andrews in this one today. Greenberg back in at quarterback. So he'll start with a handoff. This one up the middle. And a nice little pickup on first down for, I think that's Sean Goodlett. Junior halfback. Brings up second down and four across the 25 yard line. Line to gain is the 30. Nice to see him get some positive yards on that first down. We'll see what they can do now. Let's see if they'll open up their run game or maybe try a pass. Greenberg takes a snap. They'll go on the left side this time. It's another handoff to Goodlett. And he's rumbling forward, not going down. He doesn't quite have the first down, but they'll give him the 29 and a half. So it's just a couple inches here on a third down. And back in on a third down. Goodlett remains the back. 
Motion man. And they'll roll to the right, looking, throwing, and his running back wasn't there. It hit him in the foot. It didn't turn around to look for the pass, and that'll bring up fourth down and a half a yard here. Yeah, went out for the pass, rolled right. His receiver was just was not looking at the ball. He was facing the other way, probably focused on a block that he could get. Something we've seen a little bit of so far in this one, just some miscommunications on the part of the Highlander offense as punt team is on once again, back to receive for Regents. As here's the punt, as this one's much better end over end will be fair caught at the 40-yard line by Will Pope. It's a junior defensive back. Getting some minutes here on this Thursday night. And now, Regents with a bit longer of a field this time back in their own territory for the first time today. We're just about halfway through this first quarter here. So Regents' defense has looked pretty strong through the first half quarter here. Yeah, doing a great job of getting there and disrupting the offense. As here's Powell, he throws, he's got his man and hit immediately. It's Liam Murphy after a pickup of eight. Oh, and they're going to call that an incomplete pass. The official down on the other, the other side of the field from the play made that call. Because he did not survive Bringing that ball to the ground, still juggling it as he was hit. Looked like a sure catch, but ruled an incompletion. The Highlanders will certainly take that. As they have Powell back. Rolling left, pressure coming. He's throwing deep, he's got a man, and that is reached out for, and a diving catch is made by Brady Robert. And what a throw that time by Hudson Powell. You can see this man is the quarterback of the future in the coming seasons for this region tonight's football team. Good play, good throw, good catch all around, good execution. Yeah, everything about that play, the play call, the throw, the catch, it was all beautiful. And that'll be another first down into Highlander territory for Regents. Motion man is Griffin, Powell. Stepping up, throwing, flings this one downfield and incomplete. Just trying to get it that, get it, get rid of that one, and he threw it over everybody. Pressure from St. Andrews. They've been getting back there. They just haven't quite gotten home yet today. There was good the pocket awareness from Powell to avoid the rush. He got out of there, made it stepped up, and threw it where no one could get it. It's the name of the game: no turnovers. Powell directing traffic. Griffin the back. Two receivers on either side. They'll send Griffin out. He'll be there in the flat as here's the throw. And that one is... That one's caught. Logan Self. That ball is squeezed in. Another tight window just past the arm of an... The outreached arm of a Highlander defender. Yeah, you can tell these receivers and this quarterback foul, they're on the same page today. Looks like they woke up feeling dangerous. And that they did. That'll bring up a third down and three. Under five remaining here in the first. Powell back to receive the snap. He'll fake the handoff, rolling right. He's got his man coming on the drag route. And that'll be a short pickup, but enough for the first down to Brady Robert. That's been his favorite target today. Yeah, you can tell these two have definitely got some chemistry going on. They might have some classes together. <laughs> Regents offense now driving, just knocking on the door of the red zone one more time. This one will be a handoff up the middle, and a lot of space for Griffin. He'll be down inside the 10 to the 6-yard line, and that'll be another first down for Regents, now first and goal. Griffin looking dangerous in the open field. Definitely put on some plays. Had some defenders on skates right there. Here's another snap. They'll go right back to Griffin. This time not nearly as much as he just gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe about half a yard more. Sure. 
Ball still here at the six yard line. That brings up second and goal. St. Andrews would be in good position if they can just hold on for another stop here. Powell. Plenty of time, he'll throw, and this one's over the head of his receiver. Two Highlanders in on that play. It was Coleman Elkins. Coleman Elkins as well as Daniel Lede in there on the pressure, bringing up a third and goal. It's another big play here. And it'll be huge for that St. Andrews defense if they can hold them to another field goal here. So they have Ian Riley Freshman running back in. As Howell rolling left, looking. He might try and tuck this one. He's going to throw to the back of the end zone, and standing there wide open was Liam Murphy. And that's six points on the board for the Knights. Makes it nine to nothing. So with the touchdown pass to Murphy, they'll bring on the kicker, Weston Mebbin. He's on to try to make this one 10 to nothing. And this one mishandled on the snap, so the conversion will be no good. The score remains 9 to nothing with 2.56 here in the first quarter. We'll go ahead and keep it here in between kickoffs here and just want to let everyone know, give everyone a reminder about our sponsor on tonight's broadcast, Academy Sports and Outdoors. At Academy Sports and Outdoors, back to school also means back to sport. And from graphic tees to football cleats, we have everything you need to make this your best year yet. Swing by your local Academy store today or shop online at academy.com and you can find all the hottest styles from top brands like Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and Vans, all at a price you'll love. So if you want game-changing gear, start here at Academy Sports and Outdoors. If you're just tuning in on the broadcast tonight, I am Jack Farrell, joined by my producer, Mr. Blaze Woodward. Three minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Regents gotten out to a quick start, getting stops on the defensive end, and their offense is pretty hard to stop here, led by sophomore quarterback Hudson Powell. It's Dial and Goodlett back to receive for the Highlanders. Mebbin once again, the kickoff man. As they lead nine to nothing, kick is deep. They'll let it bounce as Dial loses it, picks it up. Going to the right side, and he is swallowed up short of the 20. Tackle made by who else but Brady Robert. Been all over the field. Receiver and defensive back and special teamer. We might, we might be on the field every play tonight. Looks like that Regents team definitely been working on some tackling drills. They are... Wrapping up good every play, and they usually don't let people get by. Islanders coming out of the huddle here. 2.50 left in the first frame of action. Looks like they're running with the new quarterback. It's, I believe that's Logan Self lined up back there. As he'll take it, fake the handoff, throws over and over the head to Sony. That'll bring up second and ten. We've, excuse me, that's Jake Campbell, the quarterback now for the Highlanders. Getting some run after Mark Greenberg took the first two series. Lede, the back in with him. Motion man, throw over, is incomplete off the hands of Lede, and he had some running room with some blockers out ahead of him. But 
you got to bring it in first. Because that will bring up third and ten. Good play call by the Regents, or by St. Andrews football, trying to get something going on offense. Just bad execution. Scheme your players open, and they did on that play right there. Just couldn't quite make it happen. So we have a big third down here. Campbell takes a snap. Looking, he throws over the middle, and that one's intercepted. Picked off by Luke Walker, and he's down on the right side. And taken down inside the 15, setting up this region's offense with some killer field position with an opportunity to go up three scores. Really good awareness by the region's defense to realize that the ball was in the air and that they could make a play on it. And in a good return, too, with some blocks set up they, to give them really good field position. But the young quarterback just didn't see the linebackers sitting down over the middle through the interception. And that gives an already potent offense a very short field. So here's Powell. Bobbles the snap, runs to the right, pressure coming, and he'll still complete this pass for a positive gain, just about four yards, but still looked like they had that one boggled up at the inception of the play. Powell making some incredible plays to start this football game off. Clock continues to wind. Still here in the first. Great awareness by Powell to realize that the rush was coming for him and he needed to get out of there and make a play. Even better play to complete the pass. Griffin in the backfield with him. He'll go off to the flat. He's got a man open. Pump fakes, throws over the middle and just off the outstretched hand of Logan Self. If he hit him, it's a walk-in touchdown, but not to be. And as well as this Regents team is playing, they've left a few plays out there on the field. So third and long. Long six, closer to seven, I would say. Regents getting some substitutions. Lone receiver on the right side is Liam Murphy. Running back in motion. He hits him and hit immediately and thrown to the ground by Sean Goodlett. Nice play by the junior, reading that one all the way and hitting him well behind the line of scrimmage. Brings up a long fourth down and about 14 balls at the 19-yard line here. And in this spot, maybe they don't feel good about their field kicker from this range, but this is a territory in which you just go for it. So let's see what they dial up. Two receivers on either side of the football. The whistle blows. And the Regents is going to go ahead and burn their first time out of the half. And we're going to go ahead and take a break with them here. You're listening to St. Andrews Football on Vibe. We'll be right back. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts. But did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Back in from the timeout. We got fourth down and long coming up for Regents. Big time for a big stop. Here comes Howell. Excuse me, Powell. Motion man out to the left. Throwing over the middle. He's got his man, and that is caught for a touchdown by Graham Reinches. Freshman receiver bringing it in on a fourth down and long to give the Knights a 15 to nothing lead. Really good play by Hudson Powell. 
Good play by Hudson Powell to get out there and get a score for his team. He's balling today. Getting that ball right over the defense there and into the arms of his receiver. Is this field goal try is up and good after they were not able to convert the last one. So two out of three on extra points for Mebbin. Although I'm not sure that one last time technically counts against him as it was a mishandled snap. 56 seconds left here in the first at 16 nothing regions. St. Andrews got to get something going on the offensive end. Say trail 15. So we are very happy to have football back on the Vipe Network. And all sorts of high school games on all week with volleyball, with football happening in this summer, fall season. Friday nights are our big nights, but we always got some stuff on Thursday night for you on the Vibe Network if you want to check out some other games here tonight. Very happy to have college football back, of course. Had week one this past week. Hopefully your team won. Mine did. Very happy about that. Got Cowboys on tonight for Thursday night football, and the NFL season's back after this. Sears Mebbin back to kick. Kick is deep. Covered by Goodlett. Goodlett makes a man miss. Fights forward up to the 30-yard line where he's brought down, and that'll be the best starting field position of the day for St. Andrews. And across the, we'll give him the 31 there. We'll see who the Islanders are going to go with for quarterback here on this one. It seems like they're in a bit of a revolving door in some senses. Just good for a young team, of course. Looks like they're going to go back to Greenberg. Mark Greenberg, remember seeing his name on, on the baseball team this past spring semester when we had some games on the Vibe Network for that. As this one just passed the defender... Nearly intercepted, but Gamble doesn't pay off, and that's a nice pickup on first down. Ball two. Looks like they'll give him the 38 there. Need to just get right across the 40 there for the first down. Nice little completion there. Here's a snap to Greenberg. He'll hand off. Lede looking for space. And he'll have enough for the first down. And he's rumbling all the way up to the 44-yard line. They're knocking on the Regents' door for the first time so far today, nearly at midfield. Highlanders putting together a good drive right now. We'll see what they can build upon on this going forward. And a nice little run from Lede. Reversing field, cutting back up the middle. Maximize yardage. Mark Greenberg will hand it off again. Lede powering forward across the 45, and he'll fall down at the 49. I'll tell you what, Jack, that boy can move. He certainly can. He is tough to bring down, and he's got some agility behind him, too. About 12 seconds left in the quarter. We'll see if St. Andrews is going to be able to get a playoff, and it looks like they're going to try to. They do get it off. Rolling to the right, Greenberg throws, he's got his man, and it's caught. To the 35-yard line, Anthony Tassone. That will end the first quarter with the Highlanders driving. Good drive so far by the Highlanders, and they are getting their side pumped up. Absolutely, and as the receiver goes out of bounds, there's still three seconds there on the clock. I believe once they get it set, the clock should restart, but... We're just going to keep it stopped here, get one more playoff in the quarter. As they hand it off, that's good. Let up the middle. He's got a lot of speed. He's down inside the 25 to the 22, and that is how the first quarter ends. Another positive play for St. Andrews, enough to pick up another first down to end things. 
these Highlander running backs really want to get going down the field, and they are trying to win right now. We've seen Goodlett with a good run there. It's Lede's had a couple good runs. If they can get into the end zone here, we've got a whole different ball game. Still technically a two-possession game at 16 to nothing. We'll go ahead and keep it here through the end of the quarter. Of course, changing to the other side of the field. Hopefully it's starting to get a little cooler out there for them. It's 7 o'clock here in Austin, Texas. It's a little bit cooler. Still just still, still, still pretty toasty. It's only 91 degrees. These guys are used to that. Good football weather out here in Central Texas today. Both schools trying to get something going here, and it's, it's definitely a good game so far, and the morale is high for both sides. It's been a good showing. Regents clearly winning that first quarter. Their offenses look good, and their defenses look very good too, but it looks like the Highlanders are starting to figure it out. And wow, look at this. If you're big into recruiting here, for the college level, Justice Finkley, four-star DL, commits to Texas. It's an Alabama kid committing to Texas over Alabama. So here's a snap to Greenberg, starting off the second quarter. And that's a good open field tackle that time by Luke Walker, the man who got the interception. Goodlett, unable to pick up much there. Does get about a yard. And St. Andrews is in... Great position for their first red zone possession of the ball game. Moving slow here to start the second quarter. We'll have to see what the St. Andrews offense can come up with, what the coach will play call. There's a lot of things they could do in the bag right now. We'll see if they can execute. Aiden Key, the only receiver there at the top of your screen. They'll go to the tight end here. That's the big Rico Burline. And he's got enough for the first down, down to the 10-yard line. Rico also one of the only seniors on this team, and we've seen him work punting duty in this game. Nice pickup for him coming off the line to make his first catch of the ball game. Regents comes in the line here. They're keeping with Goodlett as the running back. Greenberg takes a snap, looking left. He's got his man. Caught by Tassone. We'll try to cut up field, and he won't be able to get back to the original line of scrimmage, but a flag on the play, and it looks like this is going to go against Regents. This is where the flag came on the field. It came after Anthony broke the tackle there. This has got to be against the Knights. Well, big penalty call here, depending on what it is. Could change the outcome of the game. We'll see. I guess it just would be face mask the way he reacted. And that's uh, half the distance to the goal as is. I think it looks like they're still going to be able to pick up a first down. At the one-yard line, looks like it's first and goal from the five. As here's a pass, and that is incomplete. I'm trying to figure it out because they still have the, the line marker out there, but it's second a goal from the five, so it looks like it is a goal to go situation for the Highlanders. Second down on the incompletion, the nearly a sliding catch made, but not to beat. Good pre-court down on the left side for a one-on-one -on -one ball. Instead, they'll hand it off up the middle to Goodlett, and Goodlett can't get anywhere stuffed by a series of Knight defenders. That'll push them back just a little bit. It'll be third, uh, third down. Ball is placed right there at the five-yard line on the left hash. As good little come out of the game. They got Lede in at running back now. 
Agnes is more of a power runner so far in the game. As here's Greenberg. He'll hand it off to Lede. Cuts back. And he won't have enough for the end zone, but he's close. He got all the way down to the one. Lede showing some toughness, looking for contact right after the snap. He'll spot him at the two. It's fourth down and goal. Islanders remain on the field. Looks like they're going for it. I think this is a good call if oh, it works. Absolutely. I think this is the right call to make at this point of the game. Down 16. Here's Greenberg. So now rolls right. Looking. He's got a man, and he can't catch it. An incomplete pass on fourth down. Brings up a turnover on downs. Ball goes back to the Knights. They will have a 98-yard field to work with. Once again, a good play call by the St. Andrews Coast, but unfortunately the receiver just couldn't haul it in. Perhaps an opportunity here to try and pin Regents deep. Don't let them get out of the shadow of their own end zone here. I imagine they'll try and stay on the ground, but you never know when you have a quarterback like Hudson Powell. He might just put the ball in his hands. However, we've seen St. Andrews be able to get back there and force some pressure, so you might just try and inch forward a little bit as they'll do just that as this is a handoff, but he's swallowed up and thrown down in the back of the end zone. We'll see if he got out. And they're going to give the Highlanders a safety there. They tried to hand it off. I think Luke Walker was the ball carrier. Highlanders swallow him up in the end zone, and now it's 16-2. to two. I'm not sure what this is technically called, but I think it's something like a, just like a free kick. And St. Andrews will get the ball back, and they'll have it in good field position too. Good play by the St. Andrews defense to get the ball back on possession with the safety. Now they're going to get another chance to even the score. Because we didn't have the best look at it from up in the press box, but... Usually I feel like on plays like that you give the runner the forward progress, but not on that one. We were able to keep him in the end zone. That's two points for St. Andrews. They'll get the ball back. Seven minutes, three seconds remain here in the half. And it's Dial and Goodlett back to return. The freshman and the junior. And here we go. I think St. Andrews only has 10 players on the field. Okay, there they go. <laughs> oh, yeah, they, they did have 10 players on the field. We'll see what they do here. They'll send it, not deep, but into that second to last row and up to midfield is Max Flint Max Flint sophomore getting his first touch of the ball game that we've been able to see they are right there at midfield it's a great place to set up shop believe they're going to continue the alternating quarterbacks. So I think Jake Campbell's the one out there now. It is. It's the freshman quarterback, Jake Campbell. This is his second series of the ball game, and sprinting onto the field is Shane Verdict. As we have a flag on the play, it looks like it's going to go against St. Andrews. This is their, I think this is their first just procedural penalty of the night. And that's good for a young team. I feel like that's where you get the most penalties is just before things even get going. Yeah, so far both teams doing a good job at showing some discipline, not calling any flags to themselves. Only a couple of flags so far this game, and we are most of the way through the second quarter. Just under seven minutes to play here in the second. So here's Campbell. Loses the ball, trying to make something of it, and he does. He gets it away, but it'll be a loss of a couple. 
Got it off to his big tight end again there. And that'll just be a loss of a few, so that'll make it second and 18 after the first and 15 with the penalty. And even though they lost some yards right there, it was a good play by the St. Andrews offense not to lose the ball or the possession that they just got back off the safety. Absolutely. Campbell juggling it there, able to corral it and make something happen. The ball is spotted here. The 43-yard line makes it second and 17. Zell handed off to the left side. That's Lede again. Lede with space, getting downhill. Pushing off Knight's defenders, and he's nearly back to the original line of scrimmage. That'll bring up third and 11. It's been a pretty good game from Daniel Lede. He's definitely the Highlander that Regents has had the hardest time tackling. I'll tell you what, Jack, I love it when some running backs show some heart, and he is pushing through everyone he can. He does not want to be brought down at any point. Forty-eight yard line. Freshman quarterback in now. Drops back. Looking all the time in the world. He throws it into coverage. And this one is wow. knocked away at the last minute by Regents. Going up to try and grab it was Aiden Key. But it looked like Walker was able to knock it away at the last second for Regents. And now punt time for St. Andrews. And well, from up here, it looked like he definitely made that catch at first until he hit the ground, but either way, a good throw by the quarterback and almost good equally play by the receiver. We've seen that a few times in this game. These Regents defenders able to get some pass breakups that don't even seem possible. As Here's the snap. It's a little high for the punter. Is That one just through the hands of the Regents return team. Good bounce for St. Michael's down inside the 30. So solid starting field position at the 28 for the Regents Knights. The JV squad here tonight. Hudson Powell, quarterback in this one. He has two TD passes already. It is 16-2 after the safety. Halfway through the second quarter here. Here's the snap. Powell looking, throwing, and he's got his man. That's Liam Murphy, but he drops it. Brings up second down. Knights just shy of the 30. A rare miscommunication for the Regents team. So far, their passing offense has been lethal and efficient. And that was another pass right on the money. Murphy just couldn't haul that one in. Ian Riley, freshman back, motions out. As they've got the man over the middle, that's Brady Robert again. And Brady Robert rumbles down across the 45 well enough for the first down up to the 46-yard line. So far, Brady Robert's doing a lot for his team on all sides of the ball. Robert and Powell, that's a lethal connection so far today. Definitely some good athletes on the Regents team. Yeah, that, that arm is no joke for Powell. He looks right. Looking. He's just going to step up and take this one himself. Tries to lay the stiff arm down. Breaks one tackle. Can't break another, but that's a nice gain there on a second down. Breaks at a third and short, third and two, up to the 46-yard line. We've been talking about his arm the whole game, but there he shows some more athleticism, taking the ball, tucking it, and running it for his team. Smart play. Haven't seen him done that much this year, but keeps the defense honest. Sorry, that's just a second and two after the – I believe that's a – no, it is yes, that's a second and two here. Murphy, the lone receiver on the right side, three up top. Here's Powell, steps through some tacklers and leaves that one just short for Roman Patson. Kind of caught in between steps as he tried to get set to throw that ball. With the pump fake out of his mechanics. Even with the pressure, he still does a good job of not going down in the backfield and losing yards for his team. Now it's third and two.
and it's Robert and Reinches. Two receivers on the bottom of the screen. They're going to go to Reinches, and this one is just uh, off target. He's trying to go across his body for the screen, and he threw it too far forward. Brings up fourth and two. And this is a, this is a funky little spot because you're well outside of field goal range, but you're still well enough on your in the opponent's territory that you can think about going for it. And it's just a couple yards, so looks like they're going to go for it, but no, he's going to punt it. And he, a little Colt McCoy pooch kick from Powell, and Powell leaves that one. A beautiful punt that rolls down to the three-yard line. And Hudson Powell doing it all tonight. Nice job, little pooch kick to avoid a return. And now St. Andrews has a long field. Imagine they'll go to the running game here. Try and get out of that end zone. 342 left in the half. Some very versatile athletes on the Regents Knights team as we've seen a receiver who also plays on defense and special teams and their quarterback just give the best punt of the game so far. Right there, right at the three yard line. And that one bounced right inside the five. It bounced and stayed away from the end zone. As they'll go over the handoff on first down. And giving it to Lede, that's exactly what you need. He cuts back, creates something for himself. Good job by Lede getting some positive yards to get them out of the end zone. And Lede, he is a senior, and he is playing like it tonight. Just looks stronger out there than everybody else. Lede has definitely been hitting the weight room a lot this season. Is Greenberg back in at QB, and he'll overthrow Lede. He had him with running room in the flat. On a second and six, brings up a third and six. Couple nice touchdown drives. As well as a field goal for Regents. That's all the scoring that we've seen other than a Highlander safety. But Powell has put together some good drives for his team. But St. Andrews also played some pretty good defense overall. So here's Greenberg, takes the snap. He'll throw, and he's got his man, and that's caught. But not enough for the first down. Just got to the 11, he needed the 14. Tassone on the reception. And that'll bring on the punt team. Three minutes to go here in the half. Ball at the 11 yard line. Gonna be good field position either way for, for Regents as it's Will Pope back to return. He's got set up. Now he's moving the ball up. Or now he's moving himself up, I should say. Is this one straight into the air? And that one bounces. And it'll stay going the other way. Yeah, Pope was lined, lined up to receive that punt. He was back at the 42, and they moved up to nearly the 35. And Ball didn't even quite get that far. As it's the 26. And Regents just about in field goal range. 249. So they'll have an opportunity here to do things how they will. They're on the ground or through the air. St. Andrews will probably get the ball back at some point in this half. Regents won the toss at the start of the game. They elected to kick away. So that Regents will get the ball to start this second half as well. It's Powell talking with Walker. Takes a snap. Looks right, fakes, and he'll throw. He's got Robert, and that is overthrown and out of bounds. Can't make the reception there. It's an uncatchable ball. Brings up second down.
as throughout most of this game, this Highlander team able to get a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Powell takes a snap. He rolls to his left. He's got blockers. He's going to throw with pressure in his face, and he's got his man, and that's caught for a touchdown. An absolute dime from Hudson Powell right there. And that's a heck of a pass from the sophomore quarterback to the freshman receiver, Grand Reinches. That's his second touchdown catch of the game, and Regents leads it 22-2. On to hold here, Brady Robert, and on for the extra point is Weston Mebbin. Here's the point after. Snaps low, but no matter, up and good, 23-2. to two. It's a three-touchdown lead in this one for Regents as we got 2.27 left. St. Andrews will have one more opportunity to try and put points on the board. As they will be on defense to start the second half. Points are going to be crucial here as a stun sun is starting to set here in Austin, Texas as the temperature is going to come down. I'm sure all the players are happy about that. Yeah, right now that Regents Knights offense just clicking. It looks like they came out here with the game plan. They're executing it to perfection so far. But we'll see what the St. Andrews defense can do to disrupt them going further in this game. Regents kicking team on to send it away as here come the Crusade or excuse me the uh, Highlanders. Oh, my Christian school is mixed up in Austin. You do so many games, you start to the mascots start to blend together a little bit. Yes, it's the Knights and the Highlanders tonight. Just to clarify. Is this one a low line drive kick? But picked up by Dial. And a lot of space coming down, and they're going to smother the returner at the 15 yard line. As we've got a fight on the field. As this is going to be. This could be on either side. Looks like it was. Couldn't tell if that was Robert or Griffin for uh, for Regents. I think it was Charlie Griffin. I think Aiden Carey was the Highlander at the bottom of that pile. As we'll see who the flag goes. It's a dead ball foul. And this one's going to go against Regents. It's an unsportsmanlike penalty. And whoever that was, it's been a, a key player for Regents here tonight. I think that was either Brady Robert or Charlie Griffin. You can see them there down on the field at the bottom of that pile. But that'll bring the ball up across the 30 to the 33, which is a much needed boost after the return only got to the 15. Greenberg out there once again. Disown in motion. They'll throw to him. This one's tipped up the line, and that's going to be an incomplete pass. Cutter can out. Got the hand on that, screaming in on the blitz. Second down and 10, 219 to go here. Greenberg. I think he's out there with Goodlett. And that's got to be a false start. Is, yeah, they'll blow it there. <laughs> I 
Took him a while to blow that one dead. Looked like Regents was going to hop on it, but very clearly a false start going against St. Andrews. Everybody jumping off sides and on that one. So far, I haven't been a lot of those types of penalties for this young team. That's good to see. Nope, they're starting to add up now. That'll be second and 15. Moving the wrong direction. Greenberg. Look to make something happen here on a second 15. Takes the snap. Looking, he throws, he's hit as he throws, and he's got a man, and that's incomplete, just out of reach of Aiden Key. A risky pass as it was almost picked off by the defense, but luckily they'll still get one more chance here. And wobbling out of his hands a little bit as he took a lick from the region's defense coming in on the pressure. But third and 15, and they'll need the 42. Here's a snap on a third and 15, looking. He'll throw deep on the left side, and unable to go and find that ball is disowned. And are they going to call? Did they throw a flag on that? Did they call him pass interference? Oh, right, yeah, right there. Disowned tried to, he had to turn around and try and go find that ball. Wasn't able to locate it, but looks like they're going to get Logan Self on the pass interference penalty. Should be an automatic first down anyway, but you got to mark out the yardage correctly. Make sure you get those 15 yards right. It's just going to be where the First down marker was supposed to be, I believe. Yep. Right there at the, just in between the 41 and the 42 there, so. Automatic first down off the pass interference. That gives the Highlanders some life with two minutes left here in the half. There's a snap, they'll hand it off up the gut. Goodlett let the defense run by him, and he was able to squeeze his way forward up to the 48. It's a it's a very nifty little game there on first down. So far, the running backs on St. Andrew's team look like they're putting in the most work. It seems like out of everyone, they definitely want to win. Minute and a half left here in the half. Greenberg shifting Goodlit around. Here's a snap. Greenberg looks. He's just going to dump it off to his receiver, and he can't make the catch. It was Aiden Key, once again, the intended target. And that'll bring up third and four. Ball's at the 48. And it looks like they need the other 48. So far, the pass defense for the region's defense has definitely been their strong suit so far. And at a certain point, it's St. Andrews also has been shooting themselves in the foot a little bit, just... Not making those catches. Turning your eyes upfield before you watch the ball into your hands. So here's Greenberg to Sohn in motion. Takes a snap. He'll hand it off to Goodlett. Goodlett trying to make something happen, and he's got enough for the first down down across the 45 up to the 44-yard line in tonight's territory. That's more importantly enough for a first down. M minute 20 or a minute 19 left as the clock continues to run. It were it will restart once the ball is set, and it is here. Clock stopping on first downs at the high school and college levels, of course. So here's Greenberg looking. Will swing pass to Goodlett, and Goodlett with a head of steam moves forward across the 40. Not quite enough for a first down, but that's a nice seven-yard gain on a first and ten. Clock winding. St. Andrews still with... I think they have two timeouts remaining. Here's the snap. Good lit up the middle. And I'm sure they'll burn a timeout here as he does not pick up the first down. 40 seconds left. 
So far, Goodlid and Ledette putting together good runs for their team, putting the teams on their backs. It's been a great showing from this running back core for St. Andrews. So they burn their time out here. Still got 36 yards to go before they can take a crack at the end zone. Just 40 seconds left. And they're not struggling to move the ball on the ground. It's through the air that they've had the most issue. And when you trail in games like this and you're having a hard time with passing attack, it, it makes it just a whole that much more tough on you. Because, you know, the, then the clock goes against you. Running the ball, of course, milks a lot more clock than moving it through the air, both in terms of just the, the chunk plays that you get when you're moving the ball through the air as well. But it's Greenberg, quarterback, trying to lead them down the field to make this a easier comeback in the second half. And he snaps it, and they'll have a free play. He's going to take a shot deep, and that's picked off. But looked like the DB might have had a foot out of bounds. They're going to rule it an incomplete pass, but I think it was uh, – I think we have an offside. It should be a free play. Yes. That is the call from the officiating crew. And with those five yards, that will be enough for first down yardage. So that will move the sticks. 36 seconds remain. We'll put it at the 32. So far, the Highlanders have done a much better job putting together drives than they were in the first quarter. Hopefully they can continue to build on that as the game progresses. Certainly a tale of two quarters here for the Highlanders. Here's a snap to Greenberg. He's looking. Throws over the middle, and that's into the arms of a waiting defender. That's another interception. Will Pope, the DB, picking that one off. As the ball go the other way with 29 seconds left, Highlanders unable to put points on the board. It's another turnover for this Highlanders offense. So far, Highlanders defense actually scoring more points than their offense. That's true. Two to nothing. Defense versus offense. And I imagine here Regents may take a couple cracks at it, but don't want to risk a turnover. Might just run the ball and take it to halftime. So far, Hudson Powell putting on a good showing. They might want to preserve his stats, or they might give him a chance to do something. As some iffy substitutions here. Wouldn't be surprised if they throw a flag. As here comes Walker, and it's empty. They're going to throw it here. Here comes Powell. He'll throw, and that's intercepted. Picked off by Hale Matthews. Hale Matthews finding the edge, and he's got the touchdown. A pick six for the Highlander defense. And maybe the, the key here is just to let them score all your points. Big number 84, the freshman, Hale Matthews. Amazing play by every part of the defense. Defensive line put a lot of pressure on the quarterback, forced him to make a throw. They knew he wasn't going to take it down with him. Unfortunately for him, that pass was intercepted for the pick six. And really the first big mistake, just mental mistake by Hudson Powell, that's not a pass he can throw. Right into the waiting arms. Oh, looks like we have two 84s here on the roster. We'll get word on who that was in just a minute. As the kick is up, and the kick is good. 23 to 9 now, 13 seconds left in the half, and we've got a whole new ball game after that. Two possessions, just a 14 point game. I want to do some quick math. It's either Coleman Elkins or Hale Matthews, both listed as 84 on the roster, both freshmen. That's a huge, huge play. The play of the game so far for the Regents defense. You got to be thinking that's going to give them an amazing morale boost going into the third. A 
Regents will have to run a few more plays here to end the half. They'll probably just run it this time. Might be the smart move for them. As they'll send the kicking unit on, or the receiving unit. Highlanders getting ready to send the kicking unit on. Still trying to, <laughs> I guess we're not quite sure which side of the field everybody's on. St. Andrew's on to kick it deep. Rangel is going to be the man to kick this one. Sophomore Homero Rangel is going to be the man to send this ball back. Looks like it's Ryan just back to receive along with Roman Patson. And that's a nice little kick. Received right there at the 10-yard line by Reinches. Reinches makes one man miss, but he won't get much more than the 25. And with six seconds remaining, just one more play here before half. That's a good positive return there for the freshman receiver. And Graham Reinches already having a big game. Two touchdowns, both receiving. to see him used as a weapon in the return game as well for Regents. As that will bring on Powell one more time. They can probably just take an E in this one, but Highlanders are in the prevent. Got two safeties way deep, but he'll just take the knee, and that's how the half will end. It is 23 to 9 at the end of two frames. Regents will receive the kick at the start of the second half. Before we take a break and put the headsets down during halftime, we'll try and get any halftime festivities for you on the broadcast. But just want to remind everyone about our sponsor for this season's football broadcast, and that's Academy Sports and Outdoors. Get ready to go back to school and back to sport at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Shop in-store or online at academy.com. And you can find all the hottest sports gear and casual styles from Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and more. And with that, we are going to go ahead and take our break. You are listening to Highlander Football on the Vibe Network. We will be right back. Sports coverage second to none. Discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Yeah! For the end zone, touchdown, Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk-off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. BYP. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE dot com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for fifteen years. Third thirteen, not yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone, touchdown Rangers. Sixteen seconds, really close at the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Love 
to Vipe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Vipe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vipe, B-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vipe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vipe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vipe, B-Y-P-E dot com. Yeah. For the end zone, touchdown, Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. BYP. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, not yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives in the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates the Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. Yeah. For the end zone, touchdown, Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. BYP. 
Fight Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at FightBYPE.com. Fight is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, not yet, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, Philly pulls up the corner. Rotates the Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to FightBYPE.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEVYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEVYPE.com. Yeah. For the end zone, touchdown Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk-off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. BYP. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeBYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 313, not yet, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, Philly pulls up the corner. Rotates the Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeBYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E.com. V-Y-P-E.com. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VIPEVYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VIPEVYPE.com. Yeah! For the end zone, touchdown Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk-off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. B-Y-P. 
Bite Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at BiteBYPE.com. Bite is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates the Wilson, she fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to BiteBYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, VYPE.com. VYPE.com. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VibeVYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Yeah. For the end zone, touchdown, Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. BYP. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcasts. We've been doing it for 15 years. 3-13, again, another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates the Wilson, she fires the three. Oh, my God, it went in. Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcasts. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, VYPE.com. VYPE.com. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VibeVYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Yeah. Yeah. For the end zone, touchdown, Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. 
From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Fight Sports. BYP. Fight Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at FightBYPE.com. Fight is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. Third 13, not yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really perfect quarter. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to FightBYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. For high school sports coverage second to none, discriminating sports fans, booster clubs, and student bodies will tell you, Vibe stands above the rest. Vibe can provide your school and your entire school district with complete digital video streaming and live broadcast coverage at prices that fit your budget. Find out more information at Vibe, V-Y-P-E dot com. V-Y-P-E dot com. Hey buddy, you say you wish someone was covering your favorite high school sports teams? You just couldn't make it to the game and you need to find out now what's going on? Well, my friend, your prayers are answered. Go to VibeVYPE.com and hit Find Your School to see what Vibe is saying about your great community. See for yourself why Vibe is the leader in high school sports coverage in Texas. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Yeah. For the end zone, touchdown, Ryder Hernandez on fourth and two from the 17. Sure, Vibe Sports brings you the best in area high school football, but Vibe brings you exciting high school volleyball action. Dive in the middle for the back row. Here comes James and gets the kill. Vibe brings you walk off home runs on the diamond. Line drive, deep to left. It is going and it is gone. From lacrosse to the pitch to the court and more, the leader in high school sports coverage is Vibe Sports. BYP. Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VibeVYPE.com. Vibe is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. 13, not yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really perfect quarter. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VibeVYPE.com. Vibe Live, the leader in high. All righty, folks. Welcome back. We are getting ready here for the second half. Both teams getting ready to take the field. Jack Farrell and Blaze Woodward joining you here for this one tonight. It's been mostly Regents so far. They led 16 to nothing, but then St. Andrews was able to pick up a safety and a pick six, along with another Regents touchdown. Puts our score at 23 to nine. So the Highlander offense yet to score a point in this game. That's not for lack of trying. The run game's been pretty good. They've drawn up some pretty nice plays. It's just receivers have had a hard time holding on to the ball here. And trailing by 14, the Highlanders are going to have to send this one deep. And so far, all points have come when the region's offense was on the team. So right now, it's make or break for them. near halftime the first big mistake of the game from the Regents Knights offense and especially their quarterback Hudson Powell who has three touchdown passes so far today but he threw a very ill-advised pass that was picked off got the name right here it's Coleman Elkins Coleman Elkins big number 84 taking that interception back for a touchdown as here's the kickoff it will be a shallow kick that's gonna bounce Highlanders have a chance to fall on this ball it's free looks like Regents was able to pick it up but Big miscommunication there. And that would have been a big change to the momentum that this game is going in right now. St. Andrews very nearly falling on that one as that one fell in between a pair of Regents players. They just weren't sure who was supposed to get it. It was kind of between the 
back line and the you know, the, well, the return men and the in the blockers, the final line of blockers. But here we go. First drive of the second half at four regions. It's Hudson Powell back in the gun. He's going to hand it off up the middle and bouncing left and with a lot of space there is Ian Riley. Riley with a nice gain there on first down. Doesn't have enough for first down yardage, but still a very good pickup there. And since Bat Hudson's last pass was intercepted, it's given these running backs some chances to make something for themselves on that Knights team. About a seven yard pickup there on first down. High snap, and they'll just hand it right off again. And plenty for a first down that time. Ian Riley. Ian Riley, the freshman. Seeing him get a few carries. When you've got runs like that going, you might as well hand it right back to him. And as we mentioned, they're going to be concerned with just keeping the clock moving. Looks like we don't have a play clock here tonight. There's a Regents at the JV level doesn't play with the play clock. But St. Andrews should. Clock continues to wind. It'll be a handoff up the middle, spinning free. And Riley keeps going there, moving his feet up to the 40-yard line. Make it a second and about five. Running back Riley must have seen the runs on the other team, and he decided he was inspired. Not the only running back core that can get big chunks of yardage at one time. Got two men in the backfield there with Powell. And that looks like Griffin moving up to the line, and they're just going to hand it off again. It's the same running back. He is able to find a seam and move forward for another chunk of yards right up to midfield into Highlander territory. This running back is slippery. He is making himself hard to bring down, and if I'm trying to tackle him, I would do everything I can to bring him down before he gets going. And once he gets into open field, he does have that burst of speed, but really what? has been notable about these runs is he's been able to cut on a dime and just get as many yards as he can in one play. Just good keep jukes, his feet moving. Good jukes, good deeks, good footwork all around. As he'll fake the handoff, rolling right. Powell, he's got his man, and that's caught by Griffin. Griffin, big gain on that play. Down well into Highlander territory, over across the 35 and down to about the 32. Doesn't look like Hudson Powell was very mentally affected by the pick six he threw earlier as his next pit, his next pass after that was a good dot. He knows what to do. Make those simple passes. Nice play call there from the region side of the ball. Charlie Griffin on his first touch of the second half. This is another handoff to Riley. He spins forward and is taken down. Ian Riley, freshman running back, has been getting the bulk of the carries here. And he is just getting chunk after chunk. Five yards, six yards. Really good heart from that running back to also make it a lot harder to defend against this team as they are more versatile on offense than they've been this whole game. And they're down inside the 30, keeping the ball moving. They're going to hand it off to Riley again. He's off the right side. Stumbles forward. That should be enough for the first down. Not quite to the 20, but he's close. Another juke as he made even more defenders miss on that play. We're at the 21. Nearly another red zone opportunity for the Knights. This clock has not stopped this whole time. They've had the ball. Three minutes have elapsed here in the third. Here's a snap. Riley goes out wide. He takes the pass. He's got blockers trying to get the edge. Cuts back. And St. Andrews read that one pretty well, but the blocks were better. And the clock's going to continue to wind. After a pickup of six. Here's the snap. Powell hands. And not much on that one. Well read all the way by Jacob Kruger, one of the seniors on this defense for St. Andrews. Big number 51. Excuse me, big 53. So far, this St. Andrews defense has shown a lot of heart, practically being the only reason they're still even in this game. Yeah, they're 
staying resilient, not giving up. Even when this Regents offense has been able to move on them as Powell throws. That's tipped and just out of reach. Tassone was the only one that could have caught that ball off the deflection, but very nearly another giveaway. But instead, it'll just be fourth down, so a good third down stop bringing up fourth and five. And it looks like they're bringing on the kicking unit. And an interception would have been huge there for the St. Andrews defense, but either way, at least they still made the stop and prevented another touchdown. Forcing a field goal. Of course, you still have to knock it down. It's a 38-yarder. It's a pretty deep kick for a JV guy. See what he can do here. That one's up plenty of distance, and that one's up and good. He, that would have been good from probably about 45 yards out. It's a nice kick, and it makes it a 17-point game here with 5.45 left in the third. It's time for St. Andrews to get on their horse. They need to, they need to go down and score, and they need, to, they need to do it fast. So far, Regents has had a really good showing on the special teams today. Even their quarterback got a good punt in to pin the – St. Andrews offense deep in their own territory on the third yard line. West and Mebbin, they've been perfect on special teams. Two for two on field goals, two for three on extra points, but that was more a result of the snap than the kick. They didn't even get the kick off. Really good coaching and showcase for this Regents Knights team tonight. Brings out the Highlanders back to return. Mebbin the kicker. And once again, it's going to be Dial and Goodlett. Whistle blows. So they're ready to send this one away. High kick. Looks like Goodlett on the return here, and it will be. He receives it inside the 15. Working his way inside, but blocking isn't there. And he's wrestled down just across the 15. And this will be another long field for the Highlanders. This protection for them on these kickoffs hasn't been as smooth as they would have liked today. Been a tough day if you're a return man for St. Andrews today, as some of them have gotten destroyed in the tackling game. I would not want to get hit that hard. And it'll be Mark Greenberg again. He'll start things off here at the quarterback spot in the third quarter. It'll be Lede, the running back. Motion man is to zone. They'll hand it to Lede. Defense goes by him, and he'll pick up a short gain up across the 20 to the 21. And off straight up the middle for about three, three and a half yards. And it looks like there is an injured Highlander on the play. We do have a player down. And it's Lede. Training staff out to get him. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break while we wait for the injured player to make his way off the field. We'll be right back. You're listening to Highlander Football on Vite. Right Live, formerly KMAX Sports, one of the largest broadcast networks in Texas and the nation. Check us out at VIPE, VIPE is the leader in high school sports broadcast. We've been doing it for 15 years. Third 13, not yet another reverse. Breaking tackles, dives to the end zone. Touchdown, Rangers. 16 seconds, really close up the corner. Rotates to Wilson, she fires the three. Oh my God, it went in! Cavaliers pull ahead by one. Log on to VIPE, VIPE Vibe Live, the leader in high school sports broadcast. Wait, hold on just a moment. It's true that Vibe Live, formerly KMAX Sports, excels at high school sports broadcasts, but did you know that Vibe Live does more than sports? Vibe Live does band recitals, academic events. For more information on how Vibe Live can broadcast your event, email us at vibevype.com. Daniel a day. He's walking off the field under his own power. That's good to see for the senior running back, albeit a bit gingerly. We'll be able to keep things moving here. 
Got him Great. drinking some water. You know, it's hot out here in Texas. It's always a good time to have one of those hamstrings cramp up on you. Great toughness by Lede. I love seeing players like that walk off the field on their own two feet. As he'll head over the over to the bench, looks like Goodlett will be the halfback now that Lede is out of the ball game. Brings up second and seven. Greenberg in at quarterback. Here's a handoff. Goodlett looking for the edge. A lot of speed for this region's defense, and they'll get him after a short gain there, just another yard or two. Can't quite find the edge. That was a nice tackle that time by Barrett Gravel. Great tackle and virtually the whole defense running over to that side of the field. They had that play well read. They knew exactly where it was going and they made the stop. This is a quick unit for Regents. Brings up a third and long. Greenberg rolling, throwing, and that one is incomplete off the hands of a receiver. Victor Alcorta, senior. We haven't called his name much today. But that'll bring on the punt team. Four minutes, 53 seconds left in the third. 26 to 9. And back to return the punt is going to be Roman Patson, a freshman receiver. High snap. And great punt by Burline. Got that one away, and it looks like we're going to have a flag down after the nice return. This one is definitely going to be against Regents. It's either going to be kicking or roughing the punter. We shall see what the call is as Bourline looks a little shaken up on the play. He's waving off his teammates. He's fine, but this is definitely going to be a personal foul roughing the kicker. So with the roughing the kicker distinction, you get the 15 yards. Of course, 15 yards would give them the first down, but it's an automatic first down given the personal foul. Had it been running into the kicker, St. Andrews probably still has to punt there. So that's a break for the Highlanders. Gives them a 15-yard boost and the ball back. Kicker for St. Andrews taking one for the team there. Textbook definition of taking one for the team is he a little woozy after that play is I'm sure it can't feel good to be roughed as a kicker especially for the kids who are definitely not used to contact as much as someone like an O-lineman or D-lineman but Rico the big tight end is out there he's looking for the ball as this one's thrown deep and just short battered away by Roman Patson Jake Campbell's back in the game is that's one of his best deep balls of the night brings up second and ten All quarterbacks on the St. Andrews team showing some good arms and good accuracy. Unfortunately, the receiving core is just not on the same page today. Plus, the defensive backs for the Knights are also doing a really good job of breaking up every play that comes their way. Luke Cottrell into the huddle now for the Highlanders. Anthony Tassone headed out onto the bench here. We've seen plenty of Tassone. Haven't seen much Cottrell. But the big QB, number 16, Jake Campbell. Fakes the handoff, rolling out, and he's got the tight end and the punter, and he breaks a tackle. Borline into open field. He's across the 50, down to the 40 of the Regents Knights, and that's a big play by the big tight end. He's there. He's been their most important player in this half. That huge penalty picks up and picks up this huge gain. Whenever they roughed him on that kick, he must have turned to flip the switch in his brain and decided he was going to get back at them on offense. He broke a few tackles, got into open space, sprinting down the sidelines, down to the 40. We've got a whole new drive here. Sears Campbell, he's going to hand it off up the middle. Goodlett, nine-yard pickup on first down. Under four minutes to go. This clock is continuing to move. St. Andrews starting to run out of time. So far, it looks like a fire has been lit on the offensive side of the ball for St. Andrews. Still looking for their first points of the evening. They've had some good drives. They just haven't been able to put the ball into the end zone or put the points on the board. They had a 
went for it on their own goal line. Weren't able to get it. Not quite the goal line, but inside the 10. Weren't able to score there. See if they can come up with something better on this drive. As here's Goodlett. He's got a lot of space on the right side. Definitely picks up the first down inside the 30. There in the huddle for the Highlanders. Three minutes left in the third quarter. As they're starting to wear this region's defense out, looking to put up first points of this quarter. We've got a safety and a pick six, but the offense doesn't have anything. How often do you see that? Goodlit in motion. It'll be a little swing pass to him. Behind him, but he's able to catch and turn up field. The blocks were good enough. And it didn't matter that the pass wasn't where it needed to be. Clock's going to continue to wind. He was tackled in bounds after a pickup of four at second and six. Ball now inside the 25 yard line. St. Andrews keeping it old school, going back in the huddle for most of these plays. Well, much of that is to be expected. Two minutes remaining here in the third. Campbell takes a snap. He's rolling. He's going to hit the tight end again. Burline can break the tackle. That's a touchdown saving tackle by Coley Cowden. He had one man to beat and he couldn't do it. Burline almost made his third big play of the drive. But instead, it'll be third down in just a couple. He got inside the 20. The ball's at the 19. I imagine St. Andrews goes for it no matter what here, but they only need about a yard and a half. Motion man is to zone. Snap is low, and Tassone's just going to have to fall on it. Luckily, he only lost about a yard. Now fourth down, they have to go for it. The score being what it is, there's only 55 seconds left here in the third. And by the time they get it off, it'll be under 40. So they're at the line. Here's Campbell on a fourth and four. He's rolling left, looking, throwing, and that's bobbled and incomplete. He had pre-court, but Regents was there to knock that ball away, and it'll be a turnover on downs. 26-9 with 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Hudson Powell and the Knights are going to take over. Late in the third quarter in that Regents team, their defense still has not shown many signs of any fatigue. I guess that's to be expected when you have a roster this deep. It's a low snap. A screen pass to Reinches. That's not going to go too far, just a pickup of a couple up to the 25. St. Andrews sniffing that one out pretty well. That could very well be the last play of the quarter, 15 seconds and counting. Second down and eight. And they're just going to let this one go to the fourth quarter. So we will do just the same. We're going to go ahead and keep it here. I want to let you all know one more time about our sponsor on this season's broadcasts. It's Academy Sports and Outdoors, of course. At Academy Sports and Outdoors, back to school also means back to sport. And from graphic tees to football cleats, we have everything you need to make this your best year yet. Swing by your local Academy store today or shop online at academy.com. And you can find all the hottest styles from top brands like Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, and Vans. All at a price you'll love. So if you want game-changing gear, start here at Academy Sports and Outdoors. So 
switching the sides of the field here. So we've got 10 more minutes of action. Regents leads by 17. Jack Farrell with you here on the broadcast along with my producer, Blaze Woodward. Happy to bring you some Highlander football on a Thursday night. Temperature has definitely dropped out here, making it even better for these players. Still in the high 80s. Doesn't feel like that once you get the sun. Stop being so intense on you. Here's the snap. And Regent's going with a new quarterback to start this fourth quarter. Has a modest little pickup there on second down and long. Looks like it's Bobby Long, freshman quarterback, number 12. He'll be in to start the fourth quarter here, third and four on his first drive after the first play, a pickup of a couple. I like that decision by the Regents to put a backup quarterback in, let him get some reps, you know. That will develop him nicely in the coming years. Got Powell, the sophomore, coming out after... Four touchdown passes, I believe he had. As pressure in the backfield, and he's going to be sacked by a whole bunch of Highlanders. I believe that's the first sack of the game for this Highland defense. Earlier, that pressure, same pressure that allowed them to force the quarterback into throwing a bad interception that ended up in a pick six. Max Flint, one of the players in. As there's two returners back for St. Andrews. St. Andrews got Nate Howard and Stuart Kim back to return, it looks like. Now, Kim moving deeper, and Howard more shallow. It looks like they still have the offense out here, but I wouldn't be surprised if they just go ahead and do another little pooch situation. Bobby Long back as the QB, and he's going to do just that. Kicks this one high and short. They're going to let it bounce, and it'll... Bounce to the 40, and then it rolled a bit forward to the 38. So St. Andrews with an opportunity here to put some points on the board with a shallow field, 8.20 left in the football game. Looks like Greenberg's going to be back in at QB. Keeping our eye on some of these players. Will be Goodlett. Whistle blows and here we go. Ball just inside the 40. Man in motion is Tassone and Tassone's going to get the edge. Breaks a tackle. Slips another and he's down inside the 35 yard line. No flags on the play. Yeah, tackle looked a little bit rough, but it looks like the ref didn't see that. They're letting them play a little bit tonight. As the clock will stop as the player went out of bounds. They'll mark him at the 34. Greenberg. Here's the quarterback along with Goodlett in the backfield. Boerline, the tight end with them. As they'll hand it off to Goodlett. He's going to cut the other way. He has space. He's going to try and run over another defender, and he can. He's brought down by Gavin Blank after a nice gain. Plenty for first down yardage down to the 24. Back in the huddle. Clock continues to wind. We're under eight minutes left. Imagine at this point St. Andrews mostly looking at getting these reps rather than strictly trying to win the football game. Poor line moves in motion. Snap. Here's the handoff to Goodlett again. He's going to cut back. It's another good cut from a Highlander running back. Maximizing yardage. And they get him to the 20 there. Goodlett with more positive yards for his team. Avenging yards if you consider the fact that Ledette was injured earlier. Don't see him. Oh, we do see him down there on the sidelines. Helmet on. He appears to be doing doing all right. We'll see if he'll get back into this one. 
But Goodlett. Surprisingly, the only injury of the game so far as well. Goodlett has been plenty good in this one. Seven minutes remaining. Fake the handoff. They'll swing it over to the receiver. Down inside the 20. Gray, Gray Island. Receiver Eland. managed to bobble it and make a man miss at the same time, and he still was able to bring it down with him. It's the first time we've called the name of senior receiver Gray Eland. That's a nifty little pick up there. Third down and three. Got two downs to pick this one up. St. Andrew's still looking for their first points on offense. Takes a snap, hands it off. Goodlett still running through contact. He was dragging a knight on the ground. Gideon Kim, sophomore lineman, was pulling him with him. And he has enough for the first down. Got inside the 15, up to the 13. So first down yardage will be the three yard line if they need it. Six minutes left here. This will be a short football game when it's all said and done. 6.30 kickoff. Greenberg hands it off to Goodlett. Goodlett. Oh, and he was not stopped. He kept his feet a second, a third, a fourth effort down inside the 10. Amazing play by Goodlett dragging multiple defenders with him on the field. Sean Goodlett, junior running back, and the Highlanders happy to have him for the rest of the season and next. Goodlett right now putting the team on his back. Ball is at the 8-yard line. Second down and a long five as we have, looks like this play is going to be blown dead. Usually these kind of things go on the offense. So see what the call is on the field. They're picking up the flag. We'll probably march the offense back five yards. Procedural penalty blowing the play dead. So we'll move them back right to the original line of scrimmage pretty much. Ball here at the 13. There's five minutes left in, in this football game. Regents JV looking like they're going to pick up the win as of right now, but St. Andrews still with an opportunity to score here. Five minutes left in the ball game. Here's the snap. Fake the handoff to Goodlett. They're going to hit the tight end. Borline, he's got space on the right side. He cuts back inside and rumbles his way into the end zone. Rico Borline, touchdown Highlanders. It's a gorgeous little play call. They've been pounding the, pounding the rock there with Goodlett all the way down the field. And then you go with him to the fake. You hit the tight end in the flat. And that big man rumbling his way into the end zone looking like Rob Gronkowski. Great to see an offensive play finally come together for St. Andrews. Executed to perfection. The big man's got hands. That's a play they'll definitely be coming back to in later games this season. Is they're going to go just try for the extra point. No two here. Is this one's up and good. So it's 26 to 16 after the Mark Greenberg touchdown pass to Rico Borline. Five minutes left here in the game. Regents with the opportunity to try and run some clock. As a uh, PA man alerting us here, Daniel Aday going down with injury, able to return on that one. As a blocker in the kicking game. So Highlanders are ready here to send this one deep. And maybe with a quick stop, they could get the ball back and make something happen. But with this region's offense, that's going to be tough to do. Here come the Highlanders. Back out onto the field. Love having the game for them on a Thursday night. Freeze up the Friday.
we got another game to work tomorrow night on the Vibe Network. It's the main event, of course. Friday Night Lights. Very excited for that. Always happy to have football back after a weird fragmented season last year. Hopefully everyone can play their full 10-game schedule. They're going to try the onside kick. Hands team there. Blake Heath is the night that fell on that, the number 30. Got him listed as a junior DB. Most of these guys do play on both sides of the, of the football, but Blake Heath looks like he's uh, strictly a defensive specialist playing out there in the night secondary. They're going to keep it running with quarterback number 12, Bobby Long. Try and see if he can pick up a couple first downs and just end this football game. They've got Ian Riley again, the freshman running back, who was so good so far in the second half. Here's the snap, and they'll hand it right to him. St. Andrews was all over that one. Gain of about half a yard. He might have gotten the 45, but, yeah, they'll give him the 45, and it was spotted at the 44-and-a-half last play. <coughs> clock continues to wind, and with no play clock, they're in no hurry to get this thing off. High snap, Long gets it. He's going to throw, and this one's behind his receiver. That's a that's 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 a that's a fumble. Yes, that's a that's a, ruled as a lateral. From up here, it definitely looked like a lateral, but the officials do call it. That's a that's a big chunk loss. But nice play by the freshman quarterback, just not turning that ball over on that play. Couldn't hit his receiver. It'll make it third and very long we're back back to the 37 419 left and the clock will wind imagine they'll try and pick up a chunk of this here going through the air they will send it that one's tipped off the hands of Brady Robert and that'll be a fourth down clock stops four minutes left and they're going to stay out here, but of course, last time Bobby Long did punt it. But it looks like this time they're going to line him up at receiver and give the punting duties to Brady Robert. Another multi-dimensional player that we've seen tonight. Back deep to return for St. Andrews is Stuart Kim. Pressure doesn't get home. And this one's picked up by Sam Marsh. And he's brought down just shy of the 45-yard line. They'll give him the 43. So with four minutes left, let's see if St. Andrews can claw up that much closer. Just a 10-point football game. I'll tell you, they'll need to score quick here if they want a chance to get the ball back and make something up. If they do score here, it will look like a lot closer game than it's been for most of the game. They do move the ball quickly, take a couple shots downfield as they bring the freshman back out, Jake Campbell, after the last touchdown drive by Mark Greenberg. They've been alternating, both of them have had their moments in this game. Here's the snap. They're going to do a little swing pass to the running back, and Goodlett, nice little pickup there on first down up across the 45, nearly to midfield. Well, if I'm the St. Andrews coach, I'm calling more plays that go a lot further down the field. They're going to need to move fast and efficiently for a chance to win this game. It's a little four-yard pickup there on first down. They do need to look for chunk plays if that's what they're going for here. Jake Campbell. Take the snap. Another little swing pass. This time he finds his man pre-court. This one... Will go for a loss back to the 45, make it a third and long. Down to three minutes here in the football game. So far, Regions Knights nice defense all over these short passes. And that's part of what worked for St. Andrews is some of those little 
swing passes or quick screens and get the blockers in front of them. But on this drive, Regents has been able to sniff that out. Brings up a third and eight. Seaver at the bottom of your screens. Brooks Nelson. So I'm getting to see some of the backups in this one as that's Goodlett moving out in motion. Quarterback's going to try it deep. And that one is just out of the reach of Brooks Nelson. Brooks had his man beat. It looks like he jumped up for that ball just a little bit too early. Coming off the field, or rather to come get the play is Jake Campbell. They're obviously going to go for this. 2.33 left. This is the ball game, folks. Nelson comes off the field here. Alcorta, senior. Interesting to see here what call the St. Andrews coach will come up with to give them a chance to stay in this game. They need the 43. Getting set up at the line. And it will be the, C uh, the freshman quarterback, Jake Campbell. He's looking. He has time. Pressure coming. He's just going to loft this downfield, and that one is incomplete. And that will be another turnover on downs. He was looking for Tassone. Stanford Penrod, Basically sophomore. a Hail Mary attempt right there. It was almost good, but it was just out of the hands of the receiver. Penrod in on the coverage to help break that pass up. 2.26 left, and the ball is going to go back to the Knights, and I imagine that's the ball game, folks. Brings back Bobby Long out onto the field, the quarterback for Regents here in the fourth quarter. Bobby Long will get a chance here to show what he can do later in seasons when he's older. Good chance to show everyone what he can do with the ball. Ian Riley in at running back. High snap. They're going to swing it over. That's Graham Reinches. We've seen plenty of him today as he picks up nine yards on first down. Highlander coaching staff wanting a holding call on that play that they won't get. But a solid pickup there on first down, correct? So that'll bring, yes, second down. Chain gang messing with me a little bit. This ball is down inside the 40 to the 38. They need about four yards for the first. And closer to three. Clock's winding. 35 seconds. Minute 35 seconds, I should say. As Riley in motion. Here's the snap. It's a pass out to him. And coming into the open field. Can't make the tackle. And Riley's going to be dumped down out of bounds with plenty for it. No, they're going to say he was in bounds, but clock will stop for the first. So now with a minute 14 left. Ball's inside the 30, and it looks like we have an injured St. Andrews player on the field, down on the far side of the field. That was a good connection there from a freshman quarterback to a freshman receiver. Both players playing extremely well in the second half of this game so far. And it looks like the Highlander player is going to be okay. Chet King, senior secondary player. He's walking off under his own power. Love to see that. All the injuries in this one have seen players be able to stand up and walk off by themselves. So we definitely can appreciate that. Well, we as we've seen all game, both teams are very tough. All these players are very tough. And they both all they everyone wants to win here. I love to see it. Good spirit all around. And with that, injured player off the field. Game starts now. And now they're just going to start to kneel the ball. And with a minute left, they'll just need to do one more of those, and then that will do it. So all in all, a very solid outing from both of these teams. A lot of good to take away from this for St. Andrews. I love what you see from the offense, but especially in the running game. I love the play calling. The receivers were open, just 
A lot of those guys running those routes had a hard time bringing the ball in. The tackling looked pretty good for the most part. Defense only gave up, I think, one scoring drive there in the second half. And that will be your football game. Final score here is going to be 26 to 16. The Regents JV taking down your St. Andrews Highlanders. Not the way that they wanted this game to go, but still plenty of positives to take away, of course. As they'll get an ovation from the fans in the crowd. But with the clock now hitting zero, we are ready to bid all of you adieu. We'd like to thank you for tuning in on the broadcast tonight. I have been Jack Farrell, along with my producer, Mr. Blaze Woodward. Enjoyed bringing you some St. Andrews football on a Thursday evening. Hopefully we can be back at some point during the season. Hope you all have a great Thursday night and take your Friday off. No game on Friday. You can maybe hit the town. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. Thanks for tuning in. Always a pleasure. You've been listening to Highlander Football on Vibe Live. Good night, everybody. <laughs>